Welcome students. Uh, we want to continue with our discussion of vectors, dot products and cross products. So in last lecture, we ended up with the following. So suppose if u was vector with component u1, u2 and say u3, three components. So it's defined in a space, three dimensional space. So you have v components are Vector V components are V1, V2, V3. And the dot product was defined as U dot V, which is U1, V1, plus U2, V2, plus U3, V3. And since the outcome is, is a scalar, dot product is also called as scalar product. Now, let's, uh, and, and one more thing we discussed uh, was if we take U dot U, you get length of u square. Okay, so this was a physical interpretation of it. Now, what is, uh, so one of the physical interpretation of dot product is if you take a vector dotted with itself, you get the length of vector square. Now dot product can also be used to find out angle between two vectors. So suppose I have a vector u, and I have vector V, and I want to find out what is the angle between them. So the dot product gives you the angle in the following way. So if you take U dot V, it is same as length of U, length of V times cos theta. So you're getting the angle indirectly by cos theta, right? So where theta is the angle between u and v, but it's the angle which is between zero and pi, right? I mean, so one may say, well, okay, what is the angle? Is this the angle or this is the angle between two vectors? You are take or, or this one is the angle. So the answer is you take the angle, which is, uh, first of all, between the positive direction of the vectors. So the so positive direction of vector is, so u is here, v is here. So you're taking the positive one, right? Okay. So let's uh, proceed with calculation of uh, dot products for the above two vectors. So if I have u and v are given to me as above, so what is my angle between these two vectors? So again, if I use the formula, namely u dot v is length of u, length of v cos theta. So in that case, I need to compute u and v, length of u and length of v. I've already computed u dot v, so which is one. I get length of u, let's compute that. So length of u is square root of, one square plus two square, which is square root of five. And length of vector V is, so vector V was defined as three minus one. So the length is going to be three square plus one square, which is going to be nine plus one, 10. So you get square root of 10. So we get, here, if I substitute these values, I get square root of five, square root of 10, cos theta. So therefore cos theta is one over square root of five times square root of 10, which can be also seen as five square root of two, or theta equals to cos inverse of one by five root two. So this is the angle between these two vectors. Okay. All right, so now what else? So um, we can talk about projection of a vector u in the direction of v. And uh, this answers the question, how much of u is in the direction of v? What do we mean by that? Suppose if you have played pool, and you have a ball, a pool ball here, and you're hitting it. 
Now, depending, you know that, depending on the direction in which you hit, either if you hit it here, or if you hit it here, the displacement basically happens in, in different directions, right? Yeah, and the magnitude of that is also different, right? So if you think about force as a vector acting on this thing, you it depends on how much of the force is in the direction of displacement. And that gives you basically the, uh, the idea that if you have uh, two vectors, it makes sense to talk about how much is one, how much is one vector in the direction of the other. Okay. So let's look at an example here. So suppose I have vector, in this case, I have vector u and vector v. So let me draw another diagram. Take the same diagram, move it slightly so that it's a bit more clearer. So I have vector u here and I have vector v. And I'm asking how much is u in the direction of v? So this is given by a so-called projection of, of the vector So if I talk about this, I'm looking at what is projection of vector V onto, so how much is projection of vector V onto U, okay? So how much is the projection of vector V onto vector U? Like, but here, since uh, our notation are different, we have interchanged them. So I'm gonna use the other notation. So I'm interest, interested in the following. How much is vector u along the direction of vector v? So in that case, I'll write what is the projection of vector u. So this is the projection of vector u. In which direction is given by this subscript here? So it is essentially this vector here. So how do we do this calculation? So we should think about, so essentially we are interested in this part, okay? So we need to compute this. So if the angle between them is theta, you can think about this as u times cos theta. Length of u, not, not with, the mang with the vector direct. So it's going to be length of u times cos theta. So this is what this length is going to be. Okay. So how do I basically make sense of this now? So I'm looking at length of u cos theta. So this is the magnitude of this vector. Now, what is the direction of this? The direction is same as vector v. So how do we get to the direction of vector v? We want vector v divided by its length because we want only the direction, not the magnitude. So when you want to do that, then you are taking magnitude to be one. So you get length of u cos theta, but note that how can I, uh, theta is the angle between u and v. So I can also think about this as the following. Above I got, I have, we have but u dot v equals to length of u, length of v cos theta. So if I divide this vector, if I divide basically V on the other side, I will get my U cos theta, length of U cos theta. So when I do that, I get the following. So again, continuing on the projection, I get U dot V divided by length of V. This is the, the red vector 
the scalar, the length of the red vector here, and the direction basically is set by v over length of v. Okay, so this is an expression. Now suppose you want to write it in a slightly more compact way, only using the dot products without any length. So how do we do that? Well, you know that length of v times length of v is, is v dot v. So vector v dot v. On top, I have u dot v. So this is a scalar, and then it needs a direction, which is given by the vector v. Okay, so this is the formula for the, for the projection. Okay, so let's compute, uh, find projection of these vectors. So let me copy them again from top. What do I get? The vectors where u was one, two, and three minus one. So, and then v was three minus one. And since we are going to do that with x and y as well, let me just write minus two minus two, five, That is my vector x and then vector y was one minus one zero three. Okay, so I have minus one zero three. So let's compute the, the projection. So I want projection of vector u in direction of v. So it's not hard to remember the formula, of course, when you derive it, or the other, other way around to think about this is the following. So you need, you need projection of vector u in direction of v. So the direction will be of vector v. So I'm writing the direction first. Now, so you divide by v dot v, and then you have u dot v there. So let's do this computation. So you have u dot v is and we have already done this computation, but let's do it again. So dot three minus one, which is essentially uh, three minus two, which is one v dot v is three so length of v square right so it's going to be three square plus one square which is going to be 10. so i'm going to substitute it here this is going to be one divided by 10 times vector v which is three minus one. Okay, so this is the projection of vector u in direction of v. Now let's look at the other one as well, just to have a hang of how does it works in three dimensions. So I have vector x, so I need projection of vector y in direction of x. So again, the direction is x, so I'm going to write vector x times this scalar. x was used to give direction, so it has to be divided by some kind of length, which actually it's length square. And on the top, we have x dot y, or y dot x. You can check that x dot y is same as y dot x. So let's do this computation. So I have x dot y, so let's compute. So two times minus one, two minus two times zero, plus five times three, divided by, um, what do we have in here? X dot X, which is gonna be two square plus two square plus five square. And then give it the direction of vector X, which is going to be two minus two, five. Now let's simplify this. So minus two plus 15, it's gonna be 13. 
divided by 2 square plus 2 square plus 25. So 2 square is 4, 4 plus 4, 8, 8 plus 25. times two, minus two. Of course, this means that these are scalar times a vector, so you multiply each component inside by that, okay? All right, so next interpretation is the cross product. So cross product is basically, so we took early on, if you remember the dot product, we took two product vectors, we multiplied them in a way, we defined this multiplication, that the output was basically a scalar. And we call that as a dot product. Now we want to do a uh, define a multiplication where the output is also a vector. And one reasonable way to define that is the cross product. Note that this has many interpretation in physics and, and, and other scenarios. So therefore it's a, it's a meaningful definition. It's not defined out of nowhere. So, First of all, so dot product is a second form of vector multiplication. The dot product helps us to measure how much vectors are aligned. Okay. In fact, dot product is about, is about vectors being orthogonal or how much they are orthogonal. Okay, let's, let's basically look at that. So if you have vector A, you have vector B, and you're taking the cross product, then it is given by a cross B is length of A, length of B sine theta, where theta is the angle between A and B of the one angle, which is less than 180 degree. But, and so this is all scalar, but then you multiply it by a unit vector N. Now, what is this unit vector? This unit vector can be given by right-hand rule. So unit vector, for unit vector, I just need to give you a direction, right? So the direction is given by right-hand rule. So if I think about, think about being in a plane, so I'm my, I have my hand on top of this plane, uh, plane of my computer screen. So if I take my hand, right hand, and I put, I, I take my initial position in the direction of A, and I curl my fingers toward direction of B, then the thumb gives me the direction of the cross product, okay? So in this case, it will be perpendicular to the plane of this, okay? So it's basically coming out like that, yeah? So it's a 3D thing, so, okay. So this is what the, the cross product is, okay? So if you think about it now, this drawing, you should think about this is in a plane. So think about this in a flat plane and I'm doing a cross product. So cross product of this is going to be A cross B is going to be A cross B vector, which is perpendicular here, okay? So this is, you can think about this as perpendicular in this plane to this plane, okay? So again, as I said, if you do A cross B, you curl your finger from A to B and it will be upward like that outside. And if you do B cross A, then it will be downwards because again, you move your fingers, you try to you take your right hand. In this case, your right hand will be pointing downwards already because I'm trying to move my fingers from B to A and the thumb gives the direction of B cross A. So this is so-called right hand rule. So now, what do we have for direction vector? So what is I cross I? So I cross I, think about it in the following way we have, so if you, what is I? I is in direction of X axis, unit vector direction of X axis, the unit vector in direction of J, sorry, in Y is J and unit vector in direction of Z is K. So this is I, J and K. Yeah, and you use hat notation to signify that they are unit vectors. Now, what is I cross I? Right, so I cross I, what is the angle between I and I? So I, the angle is zero. So you have, the formula was what? Length of I, length of I, 
sine theta times the some unit vector j. Sorry, some unit vector n. Now I don't really care about unit vector n because this is already going to be zero, right? The angle between same vector is zero. So this is zero. Similarly, you can see this is zero. This is zero, right? But these are zero as a vector, right? Because zero times a unit vector is zero times a vector is a zero vector. Let me give you an example. So zero scalar times say any vector is going to be zero, zero, zero. So this is what I mean by zero as a vector. Similarly, this is also zero vector. This is also zero vector. Now, what about I cross J? So let's do that. So I cross J, move your, so well, first of all, what is the angle between I cross I and J? So let's say I is here. This is vector I. Let's say this is vector J. And the angle between them is clearly 90 degree. So first of all, this is gonna be length of I times length of J times sine of 90 degrees times what? Times, if you move your, again, let's do this uh, thing. We are, I have my hand, right hand here. I'm moving my fingers, curling my fingers from vector I to J. My thumb gives me direction of a uh, of Z axis and the known vector, we know the vector, which is a unit vector in the direction of J. That is simply what, that is K, right? It's gonna be times vector k, length is one, this is one, this is one. So this is gonna be just vector k. So i cross k, i cross j is k. Similarly, you can see that j cross k is going to be i, right? So now uh, the now you can compute the other ones as well. The easy way is the following. So you have i, you have J, you have K. So whenever you're moving in this direction, I cross J, J cross K, they will be all positive, okay? So when I look at this, I have I cross J equals to K. J cross K equals to I. Yeah, J cross K is equal to the next one. However, if I change, if I change the direction, it will get a negative sign. What do I mean by that? I do J cross I, then it is same as I cross J, but with a negative sign, okay? So similarly, let's see, I cross K. I cross K, now I'm not moving. I cross K is gonna be either J or minus J. Now, since you're moving against this direction, you're moving in this direction, right? So therefore we get, this is minus J. And K cross J is going to be, K cross J again is gonna be minus I. Okay. All right. So now this was about the unit vectors or directional vectors really to be uh, clear. Uh, how about computing the cross product for, for two vectors which are not the direction vectors. So, so again, you have vector u, which is given by u1, u2, u3. V is given by v1, v2, v3. And the cross product is defined as u cross v. So u cross v is the following. Now note that um, there is some determinant way of finding out it, finding this out. But what we'll do is we'll directly write down the formula. So it's going to be, so the first component, there'll be no V1 or U1 coming here, okay? So it's going to be U2. So it's going to be U2, V3. And then same thing, interchange. So we have V3, U2. So the formula is, if you know the first one, then the next one is easy. You move in this direction, one, two, 
three, one. So now let's see. So in the next one, we'll move what? Instead of two, I'll write three for the first part. So let me just write again, u v minus u v. I should write this in this order so that it's clear to you uh, what is happening. So u2 v3 minus u3 v2, okay? So now I'm gonna move two. Instead of two, I'm gonna write three. Instead of three here, I'm gonna write one. Then I have u3, which is three, one. Instead of two, I'm gonna write two. Again, notice that no u2 term or v2 term comes in the second component. Similarly, we get what? Now after three, we get one. So we have u1, v2 minus u3, v. So I get u, I get u1, v2 minus u2, v1. Okay, so this is the formula for the cross product. Now let's compute some cross products, okay? So if you have, u and v are these vectors and so let's compute the cross product of u and v. Okay, again, what is the formula? So let's just write that down. So what is u cross v is going to be, we have, so recall it's u2 v3, right? So that's the first thing you need to know. And then everything else you can write down from there u2, v3, now interchange. Uh, so it's gonna be u3, v2. Now the second component is change two to one, three to two, sorry, two to three, three to, so you're moving in the cyclic order. So one goes two, three, and then one, and then you continue this. So instead of two, I'm going to write three. Instead of three, I'm going to write one minus u1, v, three, and then the last one again, same cyclic shift. Instead of three, I'm going to write the next one, which is one, v2 minus u2, v1. Okay, so let's do this computation with the first one. So what is u2? u2 is two, two v3, which is zero. Okay, I'll ignore that. But let me just write down in this case, zero minus u3, which is, zero, V2, which is minus one. Then I get U3, V1. The U3 is zero, V1 is zero, minus U1, which is one, V3 is zero. Now, what about v U1, V2? U1, V2 is, U1 is one. V2 is minus one. Then what else do we get? We get U1 is one, this minus U, minus U2. What is U2? U2 is uh, two. V1 is zero. So if you look at this, first, second, the first two components are zero, the last component is minus one. So this is what your U cross V is, okay. All right, now let's see. So you can do the similar computations. Now, one of the applications of the cross product is to find the area. So recall area of what? Area of a triangle or area of a parallelogram. So let's see. So area of a triangle is given by half base times height, right? If this is a triangle, this is how the height is given by. Now, another way to look at this is we have area, if the, if the base is represented by vector B and if the one of the other side is represented by vector A, then it's gonna be half, base, which is length of vector B times the height. Now, is there any way to represent height in terms of 
height in terms of vector a? And the answer is yes. So if you look at the angle between them, if that is theta, then the height is going to be a sine theta, right? Because if this is h, let's do trigonometry. So sine theta equals to opposite side, which is h over hypotenuse, which is length of vector a. So this will give me h equals to length of vector a times sine theta. So therefore, if I sub it in here, I get area equals to half length of vector b times length of vector a sine theta, where theta is the angle between a and b. So now this can be thought of as, you can think about this as what, so this is same as if you recall a cross b is length of a, length of b sine theta times unit vector n, where n is given by, unit vector n is given by again right hand rule. Now in this case, I have this n extra, right? So how do I get rid of it? Now note that if I take length on both sides, if I take length of this, it's gonna be length of this guy. Now this is a scalar, it comes out, right? So remember, what is length of vector C times vector, uh, length of vector C times, so I have vector C times vector N. The length of this is C comes out, it's length of vector N. Note C is a scalar. So here also you have A and B are scalars. So you get essentially, you get length of A, length of B. Now sine theta comes as absolute value, right? Because you're talking about lengths here, times length of unit vector N. But unit vector length is one. So you get length of A, length of B, sine theta. So you can see the connection now, right? With the cross, but this was same as cross product. So what is the connection between area of a triangle and the cross product? So let's make it here clear. So if you have two vectors, A and B, which define the side of your triangle and the angle between them is theta, then the area is given by length of A cross B. That's what the earlier discussion tells us. Now, so let's suppose, how do we basically make sense of it in, in what, in three, dim three dimensions. So if I tell you the cross product is defined for three dimensional vector, okay? Not for two dimensional vector. So, so for two dimensions, we have to do something else. We have to think about that 3D vector line. So we can think about this 3D vector. So I can think about vector U. So instead of thinking it as x1, y1, because the cross product is not defined for 2D, I'm going to think about my vector as u as x1, y1, zero, right? I'm thinking about it now in three dimensions. So u is gonna be x1, y1, zero, v is gonna be x2, y2, zero, right? In that case, we'll get what is the formula for the area is going to be length of u, which is gonna be x1 square plus y1 square, square root. Length of v is gonna be x2 square plus y2 square times sine theta. And we'll find out the ways to compute sine theta.